It's an unexpected early demise for a Cold War veteran. The MRA4 is based on the Nimrods that have served the UK for 40 years, although with enhanced wings, engines and crucially electronics. Their main job would have been to hunt potentially hostile submarines to keep them out of missile range of the UK. But like the aircraft they replace, they were also likely to operate over land to support ground forces in places like Afghanistan. The Nimrod's been vital to special forces work for many years because it extends the eyes and ears of the commander on the ground. It enables the special forces to have fire support, to have helicopter support, to have evacuation support at very short notice. Take that away and you actually take away a lot of their eyes and ears. It was at sea though that the Nimrods really came into their own, protecting the shipping lanes around British waters. Certainly without the Nimrod there, it's a very versatile aircraft uh, and its range was huge. It could spend 15 hours in the air and fly vast distance and it had a huge array of sensors on it. So without that um, arrow in the quiver, then certainly it's easier for the opposition. Submarines like this Cold War veteran HMS Alliance are designed to lurk undetected beneath the sea for months at a time. That's fine if they're yours, but if they're not and you don't know their motives, yet you do know that they can land special forces ashore, that they can threaten surface ships and even your own nuclear deterrent, then you need to be able to find them, and fast. The MOD says their role will now be taken on by existing helicopters and frigates, but they would have been used even with the Nimrod still in service. And there are worries about what the capability gap could mean for Britain's most sensitive weapons. Now it is not there, now it is unable to um, do the sanitisation of the ballistic missile boats as they go out. Um, it is a risk and certainly Navy is pointing out that uh, Soviet submarines, or I should say Russian submarines, are more active nowadays than they have been since the 1980s. Um, on the basis of uh, more uh, Russian activity, it is potentially uh, only a matter of time before they start being able to uh, tail the ballistic missile boats. Once that happens, in effect the game's off. It all means that one day Nimrod is likely to have to be replaced. Well, I'm more worried about what will happen if we get in, involved in a, a situation where we have to do it on our own, just as we did in the Falklands, where our interests aren't the same as the allies we have today. Then we won't have Nimrod, then we won't have that capability, and we've got to look at getting something to replace it in the near future. The Defence Secretary has faced repeated questions over this, but insists there's no capability gap. Uh, national security is not endangered, number one. Number two, we must always take account of cost, but we take account of risk first. And the point is that this is not a capability that we have had. Uh, this is an aircraft that has not passed its flight test yet. Um, and they were not even sure that they could resolve some of the technical difficulties. Uh, we, if there is a risk, then we need to ensure that we are using other assets uh, to protect the country. Whatever happens, these demolition crews are making sure it's too late to go back on the decision to consign the Nimrod to history. Will Inglis, Forces News.